Hello, hello, welcome, welcome. Hi, guys. Welcome to day 218. 218. Let's get going for our fun exercise. One hour of uh, 30 minutes of cardio, and then 30 minutes of today is upper arm. So let's get going. Okay, wait, let me adjust this a bit. Hi, guys. Thanks for your likes, your love, comments, and support. Thanks uh, take care of your health and your diet and of course, uh, you know, what you eat, what you do, uh, exercise. So, let's talk about a few things. <laughs> I got some news, interesting news today. Uh, and today is a very cooling day, so yeah. Oh, hold on. Let me turn on the lights a bit. Again, hi guys. So, Day 218. So far, now it's about 8, 8, 8 30. So I should do my exercise until 9 o'clock, and then the remaining time will be on my upper arms uh, strength training. So, uh, wait, let me turn on my heart rate monitor. Okay, it's on. What? 136? Really? So, anyway, so a few things happened today. Uh, today's very cooling. In fact, interestingly, yesterday and today, uh, the temperature in Singapore dropped a bit. In fact, quite a lot. Uh, last week and the months before, and they are saying that, projecting that the next few months will be very hot because Singapore is going to be very dry, not raining much, and it's like 33, 34 degrees Celsius. But yesterday and today is very cooling. And I was looking at the weather, you know, on the app itself. And it shows like 28 degrees so I'm like, whoa, yay! But <laughs> this like uh, excitement is short-lived because tomorrow and the next few days it's going to go back up to 33 degrees. It's like, ah, oh, so hot. Hold on, Ooh, what's going on? Suddenly my music just got cut. Okay, anyway, it decides, Spotify decides to change the music. <laughs> okay, anyway, I was playing just some sign clue from uh, Harry Premier Temu. So now this is Flawless by The Ones. Anyway, again, thank you so much. Hi. Thanks for viewing. Oh, hi, KY Cool. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you Thank you so much. 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 Thank uh, gracias, merci beaucoup, uh, space is, uh, <laughs> let me see what that means, and thank you so much, yeah, this is sign language. Yeah, today is the uh, upper arms, so I should do this. Anyway, so yeah, this few days, very cooling day, uh, yesterday and today I think it was only up to 28 degrees Celsius in Singapore. Uh, previous days and weeks and the coming days, unfortunately, is going to jump back up to 33 degrees, so it's like, ah, uh, Atui! Very hot, hot, very hot. So just as very cooling today, just so happy that hopefully every day Singapore is like under 30 degrees. There are times I remember a few years, two years ago I think, in December in Singapore, it was like very cold. It was like 25, 24 degrees Celsius in the daytime and at night it dropped like near 20, 24, 23, like much lower. So it's like an air condition, kind of like cooling uh, and raining. So, you know, too bad. Uh, that was years ago. And now the Amazonian fire and stuff, oh my God. The world climate is definitely going to change a lot, man. Of all the carbon emission, greenhouse effects, and stuff like that. So, you know, these few days people have been talking about, you know, how you can uh, help climate change. And then basically, maybe in your diet as well, you know, change from towards a more meatless, plant-based diet, because our reliance on meat so much will increase, again, the resources that are needed to actually uh, have farming for meat. And like I said, meat actually creates more carbon emission than plants, actually. So, yeah, so now the trend is people going towards a more Mediterranean diet, which is less meat, less beef and lamb, more 
maybe slightly a bit more chicken, more fish, that's for sure, but a lot more vegetables. So, you know, if that's the kind of thing that we can do as citizens of this world, yeah, I think we can do our own small part to just reduce the amount of eating beef or meat reliance. I know that there's a lot of pushback as well. A lot of people are saying that, oh, the new kind of plant-based meat, the fake meat, uh, Beyond Burger, Impossible Burger, all those meat, meat that made for nuggets. KFC yesterday announced that they want to, they already have one store in Atlanta selling the fake chicken <laughs> nugget, which is, I thought, it's ironic because uh, people go to KFC because of chicken nuggets, it'll be called KFA. A, a for alternative. It won't be Kentucky Fried Chicken, it'll be Kentucky Fried Alternatives, you know. Anyway, so that was what I was talking about yesterday. So today, cooling weather. Uh, I have a cut. Okay, I use, I like fruits a lot. Okay, so sometime back I was like sharing people on a fruit diet and stuff like that. Fruits is good. Has a lot of yes vitamins and minerals, but sugar level also very high. So today, I kind of like cut for my lunch as a dessert. I cut dragon fruit, so it's the pink type, uh, not pink, the red type from Cambodian, Cambodian dragon fruit and also uh, pineapples. Oh my god, I've not had pineapples and dragon fruit for so long, so many years. I didn't know it was so sweet. It was super sweet. It was as if I'm taking a spoonful of sugar into my mouth. So I guess uh, I still have, I still have some dragon fruit and pineapple left. I might have to mix it in with other dishes or other dessert or other cakes and stuff like that so that I still get the fiber and the sweetness and the tastiness, the fruitiness of dragon fruit. Yeah, I mean dragon fruit is not a lot of taste, okay? It's a bit more bland but still there's some sweetness but the pineapple, my god, super sweet. And in Singapore, it's quite cheap, I don't know, and I was buying in NTUC so the pineapple is about $2 plus. Uh, it's like four fifteen for two pineapple about this size and the dragon fruit is a bit more expensive. It's also two plus dollars for just one dragon fruit. But oh my god, hell are they very sweet and very tasty. So yeah, just be careful again, why would you eat again health is important. I don't want to get back into my old bad diet, like lifestyle, where I rely so much on sweetness, sweet stuff. Yes, now at least it's still better if you want to have sweet stuff, you eat fruits rather than you know processed fruits, uh, processed junk food which has all the artificial sweetener or shall I say refined sugars that's inside which is way too sweet be it from ice cream to cookies and all the candies and stuff I mean candies I just have stopped taking them for many many years it's only when I started this uh, health journey since two years ago that I slightly slowly cut away eating potato chips and ice cream and all the other kind of sweet uh, dessert so now the only dessert I make is the one that I control, the kind of ingredient that goes into my own dessert. Be it from sweet Asian dessert soup to the cakes, muffin, cookies, biscuit, cheesecake, uh, and all sorts of other kind of cake that I was trying to make and still made. Uh, so like recently I made also a sweet yam with carrot cake. Yeah, it tastes very sweet. I did put some brown sugar inside, but not as much as let's say typical recipe. And I did put goji berries, currants and raisins inside it so all this sugar comes from all these other more natural sources rather than a refined added sugar so which is not necessary which is seriously not necessary in your, in your diet all right let's go let's go so the third news yes literally just minutes before i start this exercise the email came in so every week i've been chasing this company that I applied the job for it's a huge mnc and at last, after three weeks, uh, every week I chase, so this is the third one that I chase, third time I chase, they reply back and say that yes, they're still being considered, but it'll take a few more months for them to form the team to decide. So it's a waiting game. I mean, they didn't say that, but basically, in essence, the email is quite short and sweet, but it's like, to me, yeah, that means it's a waiting game, no choice. Uh, I probably have to go and pick up some other freelance or part-time job because I really really want to do this this job, this MNC because it's a huge tech company so uh, something that in a way is my dream but it helps my career path and my portfolio so I really want to work for this company but since they say it's going to take a few, a few more months 
Yeah. And like I said before, I've heard of people working for this company that took 8 months. That's almost practically 3 quarters of a year. Just to get the job. So it's like, ah, uh, okay. Uh, let's see how it goes. Again, no guarantee as well. Who knows, after a few months and then they say, uh oh, drop you or, or they have some management change. Uh, there's always different reasons that a company can say to just gently let you go or not consider you. So anyway, it's my first time literally cold calling or not cold calling, cold application to a company because all my job so far, again, not bragging or whatever, but I'm just very blessed that all my job from part-time, full-time, uh, ad hoc, freelance job, all has been actually recommended. In fact, actually, I do have other two jobs that did approach me, but I didn't really reply or had considered because, uh, like I said, um, I had wanted to work for this other company. So let's see how it goes. Anyway, so that's the third big news today that the job I want to apply for is still in limbo. So no choice. I need to find other ways to do some small other jobs to sustain. And like I said, I'm literally now on this person's sabbatical that's like burning through my own savings. I do a little bit here and there from some other side little things I'm doing, but it's obviously not sufficient. I need something more regular, uh, something more sustainable. But in a way, because of this person's sabbatical of mine, I am able to actually refocus my, I guess, what I want in life to what I want to do and I've learned new skills, I've published things, I've created new things that I wouldn't have the chance to do it when I was working because I was so busy. And most important, I can now focus on my health and hence, you know, be able to cook at home, bake at home, create videos about it, learn about it, which is most important, and change my mindset, you know, about health and fitness itself. So yeah, so it's actually been good. So if I had not been on this sabbatical, this personal sabbatical, this personal journey of like working for myself and having all the time to myself, I probably wouldn't be starting this because I'll be using it as an excuse like, oh, so tired because I'm working. Come home, forget about exercising. Come home, I just want to eat snacks. I just want to eat outside food, you know, because it's the most convenient and relatively cheap, relatively. But again, as I said many times before, and it's something that stuck with me that others had mentioned and, and like I say, it's a word of wisdom and it's true. What you save in time and money now, you might pay back in health later on. So, don't think that because you can work late, uh, you don't care about health, eating conveniently, eating cheaply because the food is cheap, despite how unhealthy it is, it's good for you because when you get old, or you might, okay, I'm just saying you might, okay, I'm not saying everyone will, but I've seen cases after cases, people going through this whole phase, and when they get old, they regret, they get disease, or they even haven't got old. Some of them, like I said, some of my friends who passed away around my age or even younger, got disease, they didn't change their diet, they didn't change their health, still end up getting worse or died or dead because of the disease getting worse. And some of them already diagnosed with all sorts of other disease or cancer. So it happens, it still happens. So, uh, like I said, I'm, I'm just thankful that I decided to change and it worked and it can work. I never imagined I would be saying this or doing exercise literally in my 30 plus years in my life. No way do I think about exercise and stuff. In fact, if everyone says, anyone says exercise to me, I'll just turn the blind ear and say, like, don't tell me about it. I don't want to listen. I'm in denial, seriously. But when you're in denial, you, you, you are already in that zone. No matter what people tell you, you are just oblivious to the facts. You're just oblivious. So, I don't know. So, I guess this is a way of me passing forward to other people to, hey, wake up, man, seriously, wake up your idea, wake up your mind to help because it's still number one, it's still most important thing. Regardless of your wealth or status or money, you've got no health, all your money, all your status is just going to bleed out to your health and you wouldn't have the quality of life to enjoy, right? So no point. So help, help, help still come first. I know people who literally have no choice in the sense that their family background or condition is such that they have to work to a point that they just have to forego their health, but in a way it's more no in a noble way that they are doing it for others. You know, like 
they need the job, they need the money, despite their health, they need to work it out so that others can live. Those who are dependent on the person. Okay. I can't understand fully because I'm not in that situation. Uh, really, really, I can't. But I'm not saying it as a snobbish kind of way. Uh, I just hope that you also have to imagine if you work yourself to death or to disease, wouldn't that impact more your family and those that depend on you? You get what I mean? So it's a vicious cycle. Because that has been literally researched and accounted for in the world many, many times. People remain in a certain situation of poor or in a mindset that doesn't grow or not successful because they never thought about all these things that will affect, that come together. It's a piece of puzzle, but if you can fit the puzzle together and understand and you know, break of that, of that condition, it's going, to be, it's going to be good for you in the long run, seriously. So if you don't care about health and you think about it's just working, 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 and uh, eat whatever you want, and basically think that cross fingers, ah, uh, it will never happen to you. Okay, hopefully it doesn't. But if it does, you can't blame anyone else. And then you'll be in that situation where you'll be spiraling down because your medication, your condition, you need other people to take care of you, or you need drugs to sustain you, and all the money will start bleeding into all these health issues. And then you'll be forever be stuck in that situation. You'll be stuck. So it's vicious cycle. Health and success is literally linked. You can check seriously. That's why I took all this time off to learn from successful people, or at least read about them, watch about them, and they talk about all these things about oh yeah, how to generate wealth and stuff like that and stuff like that. But if you read further into their life and their lifestyle, they literally take health very serious as well. They literally take health very serious. They won't obviously tell you say, oh to be successful, let's eat all the junk food in the world. Or to be very successful, only eat the most cheapest food and therefore you'll be very successful. I mean, no one, seriously, none of the successful people ever say that. None of them. Unless they have a vested interest, I don't say. Like for example, uh, Warren Buffett is claimed to drink only Coke. And it's like, yeah, okay, maybe I have super good genes, he only drink Coke. Super full of sugar, you don't drink other kind of normal drinks or even water, and he can still be at his age. Good for him, maybe it's a fantastic genes. But if you can read further, he's a huge investor into Coca Cola and basically the company, parent company of it. Obviously, he's going to say that so that he can push his stocks and everything up. You know, people invest in Coca Cola and so his stock will go up. Your benefit, Warren Buffett, he's a businessman at the end of the day, he's an investor. So be careful what successful people say. I'm not saying all of them say things that are correct, but they have a general trend, which is like I said, health is still number one to them. Because they know health is wealth, literally. So they can't sustain their business or successful lifestyle if they have a bad lifestyle to start with, or they start having diseases and stuff like that. I mean, no doubt, there are of course famous people, Steve Jobs and many others who have died of diseases and cancer and what have you. But unfortunately, their lifestyle probably is not that great as well. So again, yep, health is still number one. So again, thank you so much guys for watching and thanks for your support. Hope I encourage you guys as well to start thinking about, you know, your life. No one can change you except for yourself, which is true because no one able to change me for 30 plus years until I woke up from it and I realized it myself. Uh, despite, yeah. People around me, close to me, saying the same things, you know, taking care of my weight problem, especially since I got split this, my spine problem is literally exacerbated by the weight. So, oh my gosh, the spine everywhere now, very good. So, yeah, all the more, uh, I'm not very serious about this thing. <clears throat> but I still enjoy the fact that I'm able to cook and learn to cook and bake new things every day. Every time there's some new things that, oh, I'm trying to some new ingredients uh, yes no doubt some of the ingredients may cost a bit more but I'd rather choose a healthier option than the cheap and good but bad uh, not good cheap but bad <laughs> in health kind of ingredients there's a reason why certain food in the world is cheap because they use cheap ingredients and doesn't necessarily the cheap ingredients are always healthy okay seriously so you got to go and find that out you got to go and research they're going to read out and understand why they can mass produce certain things at that cost because they use certain ingredients or because of the mass production they process it to a point that it has no nutrition, no value 
and so they can sell it cheaply, you know. And there's almost the irony of things, right? In our industrialized age, isn't it like more processes will cost more, whereas getting from nature's original ingredient of fruits or vegetable and eat it in its least processed form will be the most cheapest. But if you look into the whole industry of how food and food industry works, you can't understand economy of scale and hence that's why it can be so cheap. They bring in a big bulk, process that in big bulk, put in a lot of non-nutrition ingredients and chemicals so that they can produce in big bulk. And therefore, per item will be very cheap for them, per cost, and they sell it at a marked up price and therefore, you know, they earn the profit from it. So, it's just all business. So that's why, um, yeah, if you can control your food that you eat by even cooking it, uh, controlling the kind of ingredients that goes into your food, uh, that's the best. I mean, that's in essence. Obviously, that's still even better if you're a farmer, you actually grow your own vegetable, grow your own meat, <laughs> grow your own meat. Well, get your own meat somehow, your chicken or whatever, or eggs in your farm. That's even the best, okay? I do have friends who literally have farm in Malaysia, so good for them. Uh, can they sustain? I don't know. They really don't have really a full vegetable farm, but still, any kind of farm I think is good because you have the most healthiest ingredients, so called organic. That's the most organic you can get uh, from your farm to your table in your meals. Yeah, man. So that's why uh, it's hard for urban, you know, urban life here where everything is imported. So all the more you've got to be really careful what you eat and what goes into your food. Hi guys again, thanks for watching and thanks for your support. Likes, love and comments, hope I encourage you guys to, to stay healthy. So yeah, today being a cooling day, so so happy but too bad. But look at the weather report. Actually I'm still trying to find out why. Is it like yesterday and today it was cooling uh, so around 28 degrees daytime? Uh, is it because of just the rain? Because it did rain. Is it because of certain wind or, or pressure changes and then you know, it's sucking in uh, or it's drawing away the heat and then cool air comes in? Unfortunately, the next few days is going to go back to the 33 degrees. Oh, freaking, freaking hot. Anyway, just enjoying the day. Hope you guys had a great day as well. It's uh, Wednesday, which is supposedly the most creative day of the week. And they say the brain peaks its creativity around Wednesday, I mean according to some research. So again, research, there's always many angles to it. That's why, you know, even the diet I'm doing, I can't say I'm doing keto. A lot of people thought, oh, you're doing keto. Not exactly. And I, I checked my dietitian and showed them my dietitian the food. I literally brought the food to a hospital, to the dietitian hospital, and then she was like calculating calories and stuff. And yeah, she also agreed. I'm not really doing a strictly keto kind of diet, but it's still a diet which is low in carbohydrates and low in sugar. So I guess, yes, there is a movement called the LC, low carbs, low sugar. LCLS, I think. <laughs> or LCL. G, glucose, I don't know, LCLS diet where they just want to have low carbs and low sugar. It can be vegetarian based, it can be meat based, but yeah, you know, now it's like getting more and more prevalent with this plant based fake meat. Not the mock meat that you see in the Chinese vegetarian, of course, which has lots of gluten because it uses a lot of uh, wheat or soy protein and all sorts of other kind of flour to bulk up, you know, and create the fake meat. But it never tastes like meat at all, never. Whereas now, the Beyond Burger and now the Impossible Burger meat, uh, they are saying that's said to taste really like meat. I only tried the Beyond Burger before in Singapore. It doesn't taste great, seriously. And it's kind of dry. And I ate it even at the hotel. Because at that time, yeah, someone treated me, I mean, the, my boss, the previous boss did treat me. So we went to the hotel restaurant there to eat the Beyond Burger because we had some overseas guests that's why we brought them there I think uh, but uh, I'm not impressed so I know that Impossible Burger is already in Singapore for quite a while for at least a year I think or is it half a year I uh, haven't tried it yet so until I try it someday then I'll know whether it's a good alternative but it's still freaking expensive very expensive so I'd rather not eat that kind of fake meat I might as well use the actual vegetable and just cook in my own meal which is what I'm doing 
you know, every day I always have spinach, cauliflower, broccoli, tomatoes, and if I do want starchy food, something to buck up a bit more in my meal, I have uh, sweet yam, potatoes, carrots, um, yeah, and all sorts of other aromatics, you know, from ginger, garlic, onions, and lemongrass, or whatever. And of course, all the spices that put inside, cardamom, uh, paprika, big ground, garlic ground, ground cumin, and uh, cinnamon. So all this, these are my bases for my food. And of course, the different kind of oils, big ghee, butter, or even canola oil, olive oil. And the meat, you know, salmon, chicken, pork, beef, seldom, okay, really seldom. Uh, mostly like 80% pork, uh, meat, uh, chicken, sorry. Then maybe about, no, uh, maybe 70% chicken. Uh, most of my other meals, like 20% is like pork based. And the last 10%, Okay, wait, I need to shift further because I do eat salmon every week. So, salmon took cut maybe 10-20%, chicken maybe another 40%, and then the remaining 40% is a mix of pork and very seldom, maybe 10% or less is the beef. Which is actually quite rare, yeah, I actually don't buy beef meat. Only from time to time I have a bit of minced beef. Or uh, I bought the wagyu, uh, minced wagyu <laughs> patty from the Donkey the other day. Or meatball, that's a uh, beef. But that's about it. Let's go, let's go. So, yeah, that's literally the ratio and the kind of meat and vegetable that I eat so far. And also, if, uh, trying to um, find new fruits and new vegetables to add. Like the other time, I was eating more lady's finger, okra, or having, having more brinjal. And now oh, I'm very into tempeh, I love, love, love tempeh. Because tempeh gives you the bulk, and yes, it's a lot of protein, so it's soybean. And, uh, and yeah, soybean milk as well. And so, yeah. And yogurt, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the only other dairy product I have, which is the yogurt. So, yogurt and cheese. Uh, sometimes I do put it into my big, big meat or yogurt to thicken up the soup. Yeah, that's about it. I don't thicken the soup now, I don't thicken ever my soup with cornstarch and the other starch because like I say, the carb level too high. Yes, uh, in past few weeks or months, I kind of start using wholemeal, wholemeal flour. So yeah, wholemeal flour has wheat, which means it has gluten. Um, for a long time, like I say, I had this fear of gluten because the year that I got very fat, 10 kg, almost ate the 10 kg I gained in 2017, two years ago, I was on a Chinese vegetarian diet. So my meal consists of mainly carbs and all the mock meat, which is full of, full of gluten. So that's why I kind of stopped it because I realized, maybe not that I have celiac disease, but I feel I'm more sensitive, I feel. Uh, again, towards September, I think mid-September, I'll get my DNA test results back and it'll tell me, am I sensitive to gluten or maybe carbohydrates or something, a specific kind of carbohydrates. Apparently it does break down uh, more specific, so let's see. Let's hear from it. Because you'll be very interested, I'll be very interested and very excited also to know what's the result and to understand my body. Because like I said, it's science-based. DNA, you can't hide anything. Uh, yes, it can change over time, okay? DNA is not cast in stone, meaning you have a DNA that has, let's say, certain resistance or something, but your change in diet and behavior and lifestyle can alter how your cells, I mean, your body reacts to certain food. Uh, to a certain extent, of course, to a certain extent. I'm not saying you can change your DNA suddenly, you eat certain food and you have, you know, blue blue eyes and, and blonde hair naturally. I mean, it doesn't work that way. But there are still certain things are behavioral. So if the DNA do show that you have certain resistance of certain food, uh, I'm okay, I'm not sure. That's why I need to have that phone call because the DNA testing circle DNA that I did do have two 30 minutes phone call with their DNA counselor and basically you can ask them about I think health related uh, that relates to your DNA. So I, I do want to call and ask that question about oh what food can I eat, not eat, can I change my diet, my lifestyle to maybe uh, you know, change that part of the results in DNA that says, let's say that I'm sensitive to certain food and, and stuff like that. Who knows, maybe they might dig up some things that I didn't know. Obviously, I didn't know a lot of things, you know. Because without DNA testing, you wouldn't know. <laughs> Doctor, even based on blood tests, can't tell a lot of things. Blood tests can only see the reaction of certain things in your body. But I can't tell deep inside your DNA, like, oh, okay, are you resistant for sure or not. Only this DNA kind of sequencing and testing 
can tell you uh, such things. Anyway, alright, Yogata! Uh, 9 o'clock, we are done. Come on, come on. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna take you 9 beats per minute. Alright, today very good. Pretty active, my heart is like really being high. I guess I'm quite excited <laughs> for some reason. Maybe it's the weather. It's so cool, I love the weather. Today is upper arm. Let's do some stretches first. This song is very nice, right? It's called Utopia by Streets. S T R E E T. Utopia. Very fast song. I know if I do do the cycling, this is like. 23, 24 kilometers per hour or more kind of a tempo Okay Today is arm, so except for later on Yeah, I'll be doing the push-up Let's see how many I can do this time My full push-up, I think I can do 5 the last time But at least the knee-based push-up I could do uh, 40 now So that's good, that's good That's improvement, that's for sure Okay Okay, let's go
German song, right? I don't know why I chose this song, but it's in my playlist. And so, it's Whole Head Danced by Marco Borsato and Armin Van Buren. Ah, maybe because of that. Ah, I do love Armin Van, Van Buren. It's uh, electronic music. Yes. <laughs> let's go, let's go. Come for that.
Can you eat more? Not about that. The nine. Thirty. Thirty-one. Thirty-one. <laughs> okay, I'm done thirty. Woo. Let's go, let's go. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty.
no, it's a real red terrible dancing. But just have fun with the music and you know, dance with it, move with it. It helps in your exercise. That's why it's a fun exercise. Okay, let's do push up. Let's see how many I can do. Goodness. I'm gonna try the full push out and see if I can do more than 5 this time and then I'll just continue doing the 40 of my knee base push up. Again, my arms after 18 20 years of no exercise is super weak. I couldn't even like to lift my own body weight. So take time, you know, strength conditioning training. So it's not a competition, so take your time to actually yeah, improve your improve my muscles, I would say. You can get better as well as long as you're willing to change and start from day one, seriously. It's all about habit and everyday life is about habit, seriously. Breaking the habit, gaining new habit, getting to, you know, change your lifestyle and stuff like that. Okay, so that's it guys. Take care. Thank you so much for watching. That's one hour-ish, <laughs> or less actually, of my fun size, 30 minutes of cardio and the remaining 20-ish minutes of my muscle workout. And today is the arms. Tomorrow, abdominal. 
so that's it. Thank you so much. Uh, as usual, take care of mental health, internal health, and physical health. Uh, please eat well, uh, rest well, uh, eat well. Very important. Diet is number one thing actually that can change you uh, dramatically, and it did for me. And of course, stress free. Okay, because stress triggers so much things. That's it. Good night. Oh yeah, sumina sai. Selamat malam. Selamat tidur. Okay, anyo kaseyo. Bama hao. Wan ana. Zaijie da jia. Sayonara. Goodbye. See you in tomorrow, 219. Take care. Bye-bye.